What is up guys and welcome back to the channel guys as you know I've been showing a little bit of love to Norway I've been trying to do some Norway uh, videos and found this video is what it's really like to live in Norway and American abroad and I hear so many so many good things about Norway then I hear you know some roasting on Norway but this will be the first time I check out an American living abroad in Norway so thought it was necessary you know just been learning about the uh Scandinavia and some of the other Nordic countries in Europe. So y'all hit that subscribe button, send down those recommendations. And let's jump into this one. Hey Chia fam, welcome back to my Hello. channel. If you're new, my name is Jenna Chia and today's video is about living abroad in Norway. This can also be a video of sorts where I introduce myself again back to my channel because it's been a while since I've made videos. Um, so first off, she like if she had a baby. first time you've ever watched a video by me or listened to any of my content, hello, warm welcomes. I am 24 years old. I'm American and I live abroad in Norway. I am married to a Norwegian okay. and I'm currently holding my 13 day old baby in my arms. <laughs> I've created something of a vicious cycle for myself where he only wants to be on me <laughs> like at all times. <laughs> which I might kick myself for that later. But because I am sort of on a maternity leave of sorts, uh, I've thought, why not make some more content? So that's what's going down. And um, I'm very interested in Scandinavia in general. I was a contestant on a Swedish TV show wow. four or five years ago. I worked in uh, Sweden with TV as well. And um, my majors in college were media, film, communications, rhetoric. Pretty and nice. Studies where I learned Swedish and... Now I speak something of a blending between the two languages, Swedish and Norwegian, a sort of Svorska blending, but I think it's more become Norwegian now as well. And I have a lot of people very curious about what it's like to live over here, what's going on. And uh, I thought, why not? Let's just have a little conversation mm -hmm. about she it. She sounds like she, I need to check out her Sweden video. She sounds like she's been in Sweden for a minute. When asking somebody about what it's like to live in another country. It's uh, it's gonna be completely contingent on that anecdotal personal experience. Moving abroad can be a very subjective one at that. And I would say at this point, I feel very happy uh, living in Norway. And um, I kind of always knew that I would, um, <laughs> rocking my baby, <laughs> I always knew that I would move to Norway or something. Like I just knew I wasn't gonna end up staying in the States when I finished college. And then I met my husband who was Norwegian and all of the pieces sort of fell uh, into place. And yeah, I mean, I live in Eastern Norway, outside of Oslo, mm -hmm. in a town that is mostly known for its nature. It's big enough. It's not like a super, super small town, but it's also not like suburbs of mm -hmm. Oslo either. You know what that I mean? That sounds like my town. You know, we not it's not the biggest town, but compared to the other little towns around it, it's, it's a good size. The little towns basically come to my town to get like food and groceries like that. And um, At least the Norwegian little, population in general has about 30%, 30%-ish of the population is over the age of retirement wow. <laughs> and like pensioners or whatever. And the town that I live in, I would venture to say that that number is a little bit higher. <laughs> but my town that I live in is also great for having a family, having a baby. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not really looking to be on the party scene or anything like that. Um, <laughs> my life's pretty chill. <laughs> so I do enjoy where I live and I live around a lot of places to go hiking and I love being in nature. And and that's probably the best thing about living in Norway, hands down. I'll throw up some clips because um, my husband and I have loved to go wow. around all of Norway and see what there is to see nice. because the nature is just insane. Like if you follow any of wow. those heavily filtered Instagram accounts of Norway, <laughs> it's actually pretty accurate. I particularly love Geirangid and like Jotunheimen and... Um, not necessarily northern northern Norway because wow. Norway's so big and so long, but central uh, western Norway, wow. <laughs> I guess I'd say, probably oh, nice from where waterfall. I live. Those places that are just so magical are anywhere between seven and nine hours drive away from here. And man, we just rally and we go <laughs> and we just really, really love nature. So if you're a nature enthusiast, you'll probably really enjoy nice. Norway. Culture wise, it's interesting because I have moved to a different culture, like a Norwegian culture, but I've also married into an Afghan culture. Mm -hmm. And I would venture to say that Afghans are uh, perhaps a bit more open and sociable 
passionate, <laughs> chaotic <laughs> than Norwegians I've come to find. And that's not to say that like all Norwegians are a certain way because I know some pretty cool Norwegians. I think it's all kind of about how you put yourself out there and what kind of yeah, energy for sure, for you put sure. out there to attract people into your life in general. But yeah, you'll find, I mean, I think Norwegians mind their business a little bit more. The town that I live in particularly although i do find that when it hey, comes that will to- always that will be very nice you know because then if you come to the states a lot of people don't be buying their business and you can see that on social media to like good samaritan laws norwegians will be pretty quick to tell you if you're like breaking a rule <laughs> but i think it all just comes from like a place of safety because the Scandinavian yeah. countries are like super obsessed with safety it's really hard to get your driver's license here the the death rate from car accidents is super low like the, like thing. Scandinavian countries and then the maldives i think are like the safest countries to drive in and you, you have to be 18 to get your driver's license here or something like mm. that but I mean, Norway has its own culture. It's cool. Uh, there's uh, the 17th of May is their, eh, it's not their Independence Day. What is it? Their Constitution Day? <sighs> Sorry, I've only ce- really celebrated that holiday once. <laughs> but what you'll see is on the 17th of May, if you go to Oslo, for example, or just like anywhere, really, mm. everyone's wearing these dresses, these hand sewn dresses, and they're called bunads. It's sort wow. of like. Kind of like the shirt I'm wearing a little bit, like everything's hand stitched. They typically are um, familia, like everybody's wearing a dress from the specific county that they're from or like from a specific family and all of the ornate details on the dress. I think I've seen that in, I I think I've kind of seen that in the other video, in the facts video. A very particular, particular way. And... I don't have any direct family that I know of in Norway where I could get a bunad that most accurately reflects me because I definitely have Scandinavian roots. Um, but I kind of thought I'd like to make my own, <laughs> like a hyper pink with like bedazzled skulls on it or something like that. What? <laughs> I've imagined that before. Bunads are very, very expensive though. Uh, they're like thousands of dollars. Ooh. But you also are supposed to wear the same one your whole life and you can get it refitted and things like that over the years. Mm. That's cool and kind of quirky. Um, the food in Norway? Hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm biased because I eat plant based. I don't. Oh. Uh, so the the typical. I think that's always different, you know, coming from uh. Lean is kind of like from people that are vegetarians and stuff like that. You know, you're gonna want to make your own food. I heard like especially being vegetarian or vegan. Like, it's probably best that you make your own food rather than going out and buying. But I did see some vegan restaurants around the world type thing. But, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm a carnivore. So, I, you know, I do eat salad. That's about it. I do eat my vegetables. Uh, I started juicing lately. I started juicing, you know. But, hey, I'm a carnivore. I'm still going to eat some meat. But I guess you just got to be open to try new things and see see what you could like, you know. I mean, me, I, I like to eat, so I don't want to just eat everything, you know. I want to make sure I really like it, you know. Like a meat and potatoes diet here. And the restaurants are expensive, and the restaurants in my town are not great. Dang. <laughs> uh, there's not much to choose from. <laughs> People at, a, at work at the restaurant watching our content like, wow, that hurt, that hurt, you know. I would have gave you a free bill. Um, but that has made me a better cook. I am forever an optimist, so I make most of my own food. Honestly, it's been healthier. I ate out way too much when I lived in the States. Facts. So I make all of my own food. I know exactly what I'm putting into my, my recipes and stuff, but I don't know, like going out to get a pizza is too expensive and you just always end up with like digestive problems afterwards. But it's also because of the town that I live in. Like, I think if you're, I know that if you're in Oslo, they're going to have like way better restaurants. Like that's the only place we go out to eat when we Mm. do go out to eat and we want to drop a pretty penny is Oslo, (laughs) right? To go and get like Indian food or like the Cosba is really good. They got, um, it's like a Greek Mediterranean food falafel plates and stuff like that that is my jam and of course if you're feeling like a bougie instagram blogger <laughs> you could go find your raw vegan restaurants over there but they're super expensive oh, wow. too. so i just would rather make my own stuff but Thanks. i mean the cuisine is there's lots of salmon, salmon. There's lots of tubed foods there's lots of um liver posty how do you say it liver posty it's like how do, i don't even know what it is hey, like that's a, pictures of these kids little like that, little, she looked like little debbie we got these snack cakes called little debbie she looked just like little debbie snack cakes it's like how, i don't even know wow. what it is there's like these pictures of these kids little like little like norwegian boy and girl faces on these little round yellow tin can hmm. thingies but they're like narrow 
I think it's like liver paste or something liver like that. Liver paste. I don't know. I wouldn't eat it personally. <laughs> um, and also I found like when I'm traveling around Norway, like when you go up north, there's like competitions for making the best reindeer jerky. Wow. Which that could be up your alley. It's definitely not up mine. And, but and then also, I mean, like you can go to reindeer range. jerky. Hmm, I might have to try that. I've never heard of reindeer jerky. Huh. Which that could be up your alley. It's definitely the not one up at mine. the bottom. Wait. But, and, Hold up. Sorry, guys. Reindeer jerky. That looked like a moose down there. That looked like a moose. If I'm not mistaken. Jerky, which that could be up that your alley. Like a moose jerky at the, the middle one. And, but, and then also, I mean, like, you can go out to nature here and you can pick so many wow. wild mushrooms. Like, I've gotten that really into huge. foraging. I love foraging. The penny button mushroom, chanterelle mushrooms, picking blueberries, mm -hmm. uh, cranberries. There's other berries. I don't even know the English word for it. I only know the Norwegian word for it. But like the forests are so bountiful here. If you know what you're looking for, I'd love to get into foraging even more to know exactly like what you can and can't eat. But now is about the time that the mushrooms are growing. And I'm hoping I can strap this little one onto me <laughs> so I can go out because I've made some pretty dank wild Norwegian soups. Wow. Oh, delicious. <laughs> You might like the cuisine here. I'm not saying that it's not, it's nothing. Um, but also Afghan cuisine uses a lot more spices. Uh, you know, my, my brother's partner is Swedish. And when my brother had to teach them how to uh, use taco seasoning when they were making tacos <laughs> because they just seasoned the taco meat with salt. <laughs> and I'm like, well, I don't want to make any vast generalizations about the lack of flavor in Scandinavian <laughs> food because I do think Scandinavian cuisine can be quite luxurious. But I don't know. It is uh, it is what it is. There's also hey, a lot you of... Hey, you know, I ain't gonna lie. I like my spices. Like, when I cook, depending on what it is, like, usually when, I, when I'm cooking my meats and stuff like that, like, I throw in about six or seven different spices, you know, just to give it a certain flavor. But... Other things, there's a minimum, a minimum of two or three, two or three spices, you know. I, I love some flavor, but it just depends on what it is because you don't want your food too salty and all that stuff. Of like packaged like soup in a bag and you can add water to. Man, I feel like I'm leaving out some really iconic wow. Nor like Norwegian cuisine items, but it's just because I just. Hold up, no way. I need to order these candies. I need to find these candy. Make all of my own Super food, mix. and I live a pretty plant-based sort of like American Californian like mm -hmm. vegan diet. <laughs> the weather in Norway is bearable, <laughs> uh, especially right now in the summer. Like, oh, it's really great actually. Although it's mid, it's late August now, and it already feels like fall outside. So the weather for summer is very fleeting, and then the fall weather is kind of fleeting, mm -hmm. and then winter seems to stick around a little bit too long. <laughs> it, uh, for me, it's bearable as someone who's not really participating currently in winter sports mm. which if i were i think i would enjoy the norwegian winter more if i could get into cross-country skiing at some point i Ooh. think i'd be set um, but because i spend most of my time cooped up inside waiting for the snow to melt so i can go hiking <laughs> it can be a little unbearable by like february or march because the sun goes down so quickly in the wow. winter but then stays up for eternity in the summer <laughs> like the weather is like two extremes here which i definitely prefer the summer weather with the sun's always out uh, than I do to the winter weather, but I also think well, that Well, at least I... you know when it's winter and when it's summer, because I'm still, like, this, this Texas weather is different out here, because it, it was super, super hot yesterday, and I woke up this morning and it looked like it rained. Like, it, it's everywhere. It might snow tomorrow. That's how Texas weather is. At least y'all can predict your weather, is it's my rain the weather so much more because you have to endure the dark <laughs> and the cold and there's also this big culture in scandinavia in swedish it's called mis kultur mis in kultur. norwegian it's kos kultur and then in danish it's hig kultur mm -hmm. and it's like um, cozy culture right kosle kosle in uh, norwegian means cozy comfy cute together with your family and like Norwegians will always like respond to something cute that you do and they'll be like, oh, that's so cozy, <laughs> which is cute. So if you can get really into like lighting candles, like Norwegians mm. are super into like their tea candles and stuff like that. Like, and uh, you can be close with your family and cuddle a lot and stuff like that. You can get through it, <laughs> but nice, by nice. the end, like if you, if you have the expectation that winter is going to last through like March, then you're setting yourself up better mentally because like, 
when you know that it's supposed to be winter, you're like, okay, I know that it's winter. But like when you're like, the weather could get better at any point, right? And it just like kind of doesn't. And then you're just like, uh, like when is it gonna get better? <laughs> I feel like I've covered a lot. We've got food. We've got weather. We've got nature. nature we've got culture. The people. You know. I follow a couple of different Facebook pages of expats who live abroad, and everyone's got such different experiences. Mm. I've seen people write about how much they absolutely hate living here, Dang. how much it turned out to not be something that they liked. And then there's people like me who they really enjoy it. They kind of know what they were getting themselves into, and they things turned out better than they could have anticipated. That seems to be the case for me. That's good, because, you know, it's always different strokes for different folks, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes what's meant to be may not be. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, I feel like you don't have to bash it. Like, uh, my town I grew up in, people always talk that it's not the perfect town, but I mean, it's up to you. You got to make the best of where you live. You got to make the best of your own life. You know, that's what I always believe. You know, it's not, sometimes we put, leave it up to other people and other things, but it's really up to us to make the best of the best. It was definitely difficult in the beginning before I knew enough Norwegian and when I was just like dealing with the mental capacity, the mental load, I guess, of realizing that I moved to another country away from everything that I had ever, ever, ever mm. known. That is a lot for a person to handle. I bet. <laughs> and I could not have anticipated all of the emotional shifts I was going to go through and I had to be really patient with myself. But once things leveled out and I started to feel like, yeah, this is like my home, then it just got easier, you know? And it definitely helps that I've got a really solid life partner. That's and good. he's very supportive and he's been there for me through like everything that I've had to go through, which has been great. And I mean, the other thing is too, is I'm definitely Norwegian passing. Like if you just saw me on the streets with keeping my mouth shut, <laughs> and if I don't walk too much, like I take up too much space like Americans can do, like I definitely blend in for sure. <laughs> and it definitely helps that I can speak the language. I think if you move to Norway and you don't know the language, it's gonna feel difficult Ooh. and it's just gonna be kind of harder to connect, especially if you're with, if you live in an area where people are a little bit older as well. That's just my experience with it. Yeah, that's kind of what it's like to live in Norway. Maybe I'll break this video up into a couple different parts. I think this is where I'm going to okay. end the video today. So I hope you enjoyed Ooh, it. Oh, that's a subscribe thing. If you've got any questions for future open. videos down in the comments below. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye. Okay, Jenna. Okay, she got a podcast, you know? Y'all make sure. I'm going to have to check out her podcast as well. Uh, I, as she mentioned, like, I, I can understand how hard, like, you know, and I know I said this in another video before, like, you know, moving to another, you know, city or another house within that city or another state can be hard. But moving to a different country, it got to be tough, got to be even tougher, you know, but, you know, people doing it and kudos to those that are able to make that change and adjust to that change, you know, because being able to adjust is always, perfect, you know. So, but kudos. This was good. This was good. You know, I, I, I liked it. I liked it. You know, just to see a little bit about Norway and Americans living in Norway, you know, because I, I don't get to see too much of or hear from people from America that have lived abroad in Norway. So, so far I got Sweden, Denmark. I don't think I had, oh, the Netherlands. I did have the Netherlands, but I think that guy was from Canada. I'm trying to, yeah, uh, he might be for Canada, I think. But it's always good to hear other people's expect, uh, perspectives and experience. So pretty good. Y'all make sure y'all give Jenna uh, a subscribe. Check out her stuff. I got to check out her podcast. Make sure I subscribe and stuff like that. But that's all I have for this video. Hit that subscribe button. Send down those recommendations. And y'all be blessed. Be the best and be you. I'm out.